Welcome to Not Rod Science Class. Not Science Class. Yeah. Today, I've got a hot take for you. We're going to discuss why bore and stroke don't matter. I know, that's pretty controversial, but bear with me and hopefully by the end of this, you'll see why. Size matters, clearly. But for a given displacement, does it really make any difference if we swap the bore and stroke to get to that displacement? The short answer is no, but for the long answer, I've got a formula for you. The formula is average PSI times piston face area times stroke length divided by 12 divided by 2 divided by 2. And if you're not a huge fan of math, don't worry, this will all make sense in just a second. If you're the type that falls asleep during math class, before you do, head on over to our new store and shop around. We won't blame you if you don't stick around for the rest of the episode. To illustrate this point, let's start when the air and fuel mixture is ignited, somewhere around 35 degrees before top dead center. As the flame front expands, the piston is heading up towards top dead center and pressure slowly rises and reaches a peak somewhere around 25 degrees after top dead center. For a healthy street engine, this peak can be somewhere around 1,000 PSI, steadily falling down to about 100 PSI by the time the exhaust valve opens. That means we must average the PSI to somewhere right around 500, which is the number we'll use for the first part of this, average PSI. Now in our formula, we take this average PSI and we multiply it by the piston face area. To get that, we'll use the example of a 427 big block Chevy, which has a diameter of four and a quarter inches. So to get the surface area, we go four and a quarter. We divide that by two to get two and an eighth squared times pi, 3.14, which equals 14.18 square inches. So that means we've got an average PSI of 500 times the face area, which is 14.18. Now, if we multiply those two together, our average PSI by the piston face area, we get 7,090 pounds. This is the total amount of average pressure on our piston or on our crank pin. Now we need to multiply that total pressure by our effective stroke length. Since we're using a 427 big block Chevy as an example, we'll take our stroke length, which is 3.76. And now we've got to divide that by 12 because our stroke isn't 24 inches. If our crankshaft was 24 inches long, it would be easy because we divide by two to get an effective stroke length from the center of the crankshaft to the connecting rod of 12 inches. So every single pound of force would be one foot pound. You see, one foot pound is a leverage point 12 inches long with one pound on the end of it. One foot pound. But since our crankshaft isn't 12 inches long, we divide 3.76 by 12. So 3.76 divided by 12 is 0 0.313 repeating. Then we divide by 2 because we're not putting force on the entire stroke. We're only putting it on half the stroke from the center of the crank to the rod journal. So that equals 0 0.157. Then remember how we had to average the piston PSI because we weren't using all of that 1000 PSI all the way through? We have to do that same thing with the stroke and average the amount that we have because the crank starts at zero at the top and then ends at zero at the bottom essentially. So we divide this 1.57 by 2 again to get 0 0.078. So if we take 7,090 pounds of force, multiply it by an effective stroke length of 0 0.078, that equals 553.02 foot-pounds of torque. Not bad, our little 427 makes 553 foot-pounds of torque. But here's where things get interesting. What if we swap our stroke and our bore to get the same 427 cubic inches? Does this number change? Let's find out. So what we're going to do next is we're going to make a 427 cubic inch engine, but we're going to use a four and an eighth inch bore instead of four and a quarter and we're gonna use a four inch stroke. 
Now our average PSI isn't going to change because we're still using gasoline, we're still using the same intake manifold, the same heads, the same exhaust, all that. So we're going to stay at 500 average PSI. But our piston face area is going to change because now we've got a smaller bore. And on a four and an eighth inch bore, that is going to be 13.36 square inches. And then our leverage is going to change as well. I'm not going to make you go through all this math again, but just trust me that once we do all that on a four inch stroke, that's going to increase to zero 0.083, which is a little bit more than we had because now we've got a four inch stroke instead of a 3.76 inch stroke. So now if we multiply those three things together, let's see what this 427 will make. 500 times 13.36 equals 6,680 pounds rather than our 7,090 that we had before. Then multiply that by our effective stroke. 0.083 equals 554.44 foot-pounds of torque. Pretty darn similar, isn't it? And that one foot-pound difference that we're seeing right here is really just a rounding error because we're using so many decimal points. But for all intents and purposes, it is the same. I mean, if you throw an engine on a dyno, back-to-back -back runs, you're gonna see more variation than one foot-pound like that. As long as your displacement is the same, they equal the same amount of torque. And it does not matter what combination you use this formula on, no matter what, use it on a 350, 327, 260, 289, doesn't matter. It will always end up being the same amount of foot-pounds of torque as long as the displacement remains the same. Now, what you're probably thinking is, well, but since your stroke length is different, the peak torque might be the same, but it's gonna be at a different RPM. You're wrong on that too, and next I'll explain why. So to start the next segment, it's important to understand that the crankshaft doesn't rotate in a vacuum. It only does what it does because you have burning fuel forcing pressure upon it. Assuming that that fuel is perfectly atomized gasoline, the laminar burning velocity is 1.64 feet per second, or one inch every 19.6 milliseconds. And to illustrate this point, I'm gonna take a magic box right here. Now, let's assume our magic box is three inches by three inches by four inches, okay? And we've got it standing up like this. And we have a magical ignition device that can ignite an air fuel mixture inside here directly in the center without impeding the flame front. How long will it take for the flame front to reach all the sides inside of this box? About 352.8 milliseconds. So now if we take this box and we flip it on its side, is it gonna take more or less time for that flame front to reach all the same parts of the box? No, of course not. That is all we are doing when we reverse the bore and stroke. As long as your volume is the same, it is going to take the same amount of time for that flame front to make the same amount of pressure on the face of your piston. What that means is the piston is gonna take the same amount of time to go from top dead center to bottom dead center at peak torque. So now that we've determined that displacement is displacement and you'll make the same amount of power regardless of the bore and stroke combination, as long as the displacement is the same, what are some of the ways that stroke length can affect performance? First and foremost is piston velocity. The piston moves a lot faster with a longer stroke. And because it has to stop at the top and the bottom every time, it gets jerked up and down much more violently with a longer stroke. It can also create more side load on your piston, so you're not getting as much longevity out of your piston and your cylinder wall. The other thing that the short stroke does is it means that the piston has more dwell time at the top and at the bottom. So at really high RPMs, that can help to fill the cylinder more completely full of an atomized mixture, but that really only has an effect when you start getting above like 7,000 RPMs. It's just not something you're gonna see very often on a street motor. One of the positives, however, to having a longer stroke is because the piston goes through top dead center so fast, 
they can be better for detonation at lower speeds. And that's likely where stroker motors get their reputation for being such good torque motors. Is that really worth the negative effects of a longer stroke? Well, that's for you to decide. But what do you think? Leave some comments, let me know. Do you think I'm just full of it? Everything that guy just says is bullshit. Or do you think that all of this stuff actually makes sense? Our little 427 makes 553 foot, foot. <laughs> like it's ridiculous, I'm wearing a lab coat. But one benefit to having a longer stroke length is that it can actually help to prevent. Did you get the bug in there? Yep. Now we need to multiply that total pressure by a rough. <laughs> we'll be here all day, people. <laughs> You're the director, so that's your line. Okay. Back to work. Thanks so much for sticking around to watch that tedious monstrosity of an episode. And if after all of that, you're still not convinced, I'm wearing a lab coat, so I know what I'm talking about.